Vikings get booted out of the playoffs, but we're still talking about top five winners. Let's go, baby. Who are the winners? All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepagus Show. I'm One Bar with Lepagus Vikings. Unfortunately, getting booted out of the playoffs, but uh, we're talking five winners. And as always, let us know your winners down in the comments. I can't stop drinking. I'm so mad. I don't know if I ever will. I don't know if I ever will. This is yeah, the Vikings. What Vikings fans do. They lost 31 24 to the Giants, and the 13 4 Vikings lost to the 9 7 and 1 Giants. But. Uh, despite that, there were some guys who showed up today and played damn well. So we're going to talk with those guys. We're going to honor them here in this video. Before you do, remember to uh, check out uh, that's badass. What are we're pairing up with them? We're going to give an awesome giveaway here at the end of the month. Um, if you have not followed me yet on Twitter, be sure to do that. That's badass. What are some fantastic Viking stuff? And they got all kinds of shit, pop culture stuff. If you're an office fan, they got stuff for you. Uh, pretty much anything you name it, they got it. So uh, that's badass. What are hit them up. Do it, do it, and I uh, love because you're a little more excited about these five winners. Yes, they deserve it, but also, um, do they deserve it? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to move on. I'm trying to make progress. That's what we and always do. Is take a step fans, forward. We're always moving on. But let's start off with an easy one. Let's go with a trade that the Vikings made mid-season yeah. that you cannot bitch about. If you're bitching about this trade, grab your fist. Curl it up yeah. and put yourself in the crotch, male Ugh. or female, because this has panned out very, 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 very well for the Minnesota Vikings. TJ Hawkinson is a new giant killer. Last time he played Giants, he ripped shit up. This time, absolutely ripped it up again. 10 receptions, 129 yards, 10 receptions on 11, re oh. uh, 11 targets. So, TJ Hawkinson, A plus. If he wasn't altered today, I mean, we saw what Irv, what happens when we throw Irv the ball aside from that touchdown. Just bounces off his body. TJ, winner, 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 chicken dinner. And you mentioned everybody's upset about the trade. The the one thing they could say is like, well, he he has a lot of drops. And but today, TJ Hawkinson was glue. I mean, that thing went to him. He caught everything thrown to him. It was a contested catch. He caught it. Mm. I, mm. I don't remember the one that he didn't catch. Maybe it was uncatchable. But uh, TJ Hawkinson, he brought it today. And the other thing is he got factor in. When he came in, what he's done for Justin Jefferson, opening him up, uh, there was times where he was kind of getting shut down. Hawkinson came in, Austin Jefferson is one of this crazy run. So um, he he's a player you get a second round pick for, but you're probably taking a sec a tight end probably because Smith's going to be gone. You're probably targeting a tight end there anyway. Now you have a proven commodity. He's still super super young, so damn good. T.J. Hawkinson's going to be here for the long haul. He'll be here with Justin Jefferson and whatever offense. I mean, there's going to be a new quarterback eventually here, uh, maybe two years down the road. He's he's the core of this team, TJ Hawkinson. Hell a yes. Second round pick for a 25 year old tight end oh. that rips shit up. If you're complaining about this, screw you. Hawkinson, well done, sir. Uh, very, very big part of this offense moving forward. Let's go to the special teams. Let's go to that beautiful punter. That has been a uh, winner on many, many, many of our lists. And uh, he ends up with three punts, averaging 55 yards a punt. Two of those inside the 20th long 61. Ryan Wright, we love you more than anything. Yeah, the only thing negative to say about Ryan Wright is that we had to use him three times today. And, and in a perfect world, you don't see him at all. But he was out there, and when he uh, was called upon to do his job, he did it very well booted the shit out of that mm. ball today. Ryan Wright putting every bit of that gut into Ooh. his leg, launching that ball down the field. Uh, did you say 55 yards average today? Duh. I mean, this guy's just been doing it all year long. Uh, I got to I gotta apologize, Ryan Wright. Uh, when they moved on from Jordan Berry, I was like, what is this team doing? This is an outrage. I was wrong. Ryan Wright's been You're a stud. He's going to be uh, our punter for a long time. Ryan Wright, uh, you know, the game doesn't go well when you are named a stud of this thing, but you did your job and you did it well. So well done, sir. Well done. All right, let's go to a quick and dirty one, easy one. Duke Shelley, a guy who continues to exceed expectations week in and week out. 5'8", 4'6", 3'2", whatever he is, he is a damn good corner. I want to see the Vikings bring him back. We already talked about it. What capacity they bring him back. Do we want him to be a starting corner? 
Probably not. Do we want him some beautiful depth? Absolutely. But Duke Shelley continues to prove that this man should be out on the field often. Yeah, I mean, the dude's just a gamer. I mean, he's just he just makes plays. That's what he does. He's he's this tiny little guy out there. He's fiery, uh, but he makes up for it. He's got little man syndrome, and he just, he's just intense, and he makes plays. So Duke Shelley, I, I don't think he can be a starter. I mean, you look at this roster. Obviously, I think he's proving can. A bunch of evaluation is going to have to happen, and here's the problem with it when it comes to him being a starter. There's just so many teams that have you know six two, six three, six four wide receivers. Number one, number two is if you're one of those starters, you're going to have to go against those guys. And is there's just a, a mismatch there that, from a physical standpoint, you can't overcome uh, high pointing the ball in the end zone, whatever. So that's always going to be an issue for Duke Shelley. But this guy is just so damn good. He makes tackles. He knows where to put his hands. He's very, very aggressive. So I love what I've seen from Duke Shelley. Quasi, just well done signing this guy from the scrap heap that he was thrown upon. And to be fair to Duke Shelley, uh, opposing offenses have known that Duke Shelley is going to be the starting cornerback. Mm. It's not like he was just thrust in at the last second, mm. and he's still performing. So to say that uh, you know he can't do this week in and week out, he's proved he can so Lubbockus, I don't think you're giving him much love as you should. I just think there's going to be times where just his size will well, obviously be a there's going to be times. Yeah, there's going to be times where. But it's that's just, up you, for the defensive coordinator to make you, sure. He you can lob a high that. pointer, he he just won't be able to get to it. Well, I mean, the defense coordinator shouldn't put him on Mike Evans. I mean, they got to know where to move him around. But I think Duke Shelley has proven that he can be a starter in this league. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I love him. He's the little engine that could, and he's proven it over and over again this year. All right, let's go to special teams again, wah, wah, which means not great, but let's go to Greg Joseph. Hey, you didn't miss a kick. All right, yay, move on. He didn't, but again, in a, in a game where um, you, you had to be perfect because uh, the defense couldn't stop anybody, so every time you scored, you had to get the extra point. If it was a field goal, you had to make the field goal because your defense was not going to make a stop. They proved that the entire game, that they just weren't here to play today. So when you score, you have to get every single point available. Greg Joseph, you came up, you showed up today. You were not the problem, and, and you've been the problem before. We've been hard on you before, and you deserved it. But today, we're giving you praise because you did your job. You came out, and you did your job today. Well done. As Lubbockus once said, he just did his job. He, he did, his job. did his job. He doesn't deserve it, but he did his job. A lot of guys didn't do their job today. You can point to about 11 guys on the defensive side of the ball who didn't do their job today. Greg Joseph did his job today. All right. There you have it. Lubbockus is pulling a 180 on us. Let's go to the last one. Kirk freaking Cousins. 31 to 39, only eight incompletions, 273 yards, two touchdowns, took zero sacks and zero turnovers. Yeah. And I mean, you can harp on him for the last play, the uh, dumping it three yards on fourth and eight. Harp uh, on him. I'd like to slap him around a little bit and say, what are you doing? But you got to look back at what he did for everything else. I mean, this guy was throwing the ball. He was slinging it. He played well. He had a lot of pressure in his face, taking some big-time hits, which he's done all season long. Kirk Cousins was not the reason we lost this game, and anybody who thinks that he was, shame on you. Uh, the question is, I mean, where do you go from here? I mean, he's probably back next year, but you got to bring in somebody young to groom for the future. Uh, and – We'll talk about that in a future video. But today, Kirk Cousins, I thought, played well enough for the Wagons to win this game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kirk Cousins did not lose this game. The, the last play will uh, haunt me till the day I die. Why that was ha why that was made, we, we don't know. Um, that was on Kirk Cousins. But I think Kirk Cousins will be this quarterback for the future. <laughs> and I think – I don't think there's any way there's any way around it. So, Kirk Cousins – Winner, winner, chicken dinner in our book. So uh, it's tough to find some winners in a very, very tough loss. That is a punch right to where we go potty. Uh, so as always, let us know your winners in the comments. Absolutely. And remember this, Coca-Cola still uses cocoa leaves as an ingredient in its syrup. The cocaine is removed at a unique U.S. government authorized factory in New Jersey.